here at Taoist Press um, work hard on having a theme uh, that's not only something that I, uh, I choose to preach about or the lectionary tells us uh, is on the calendar, but we've made a, a real effort in the last few years to have everything about the worship, which is how God, I believe, intended it, to echo that truth of God. And so, uh, Patty, thank you, because we work together as a worship team to have the words of God illuminated best how it will pierce your soul. And sometimes that's through word, and sometimes that's through voice, and sometimes that's through Margie and music. And so if you open your ears and your hearts throughout the service, it is our prayer that whether you understand or not on a cognitive level, God will do a good work in you, and you will leave feeling pierced by the word of God. Uh, the New Testament reading for today from me comes from the book of Colossians, Paul's letter to the Colossians. Um, I'm reading uh, chapter 3. Your bulletin says 12 to 15, and I'm going to continue on to 17 because I think it's important. Hear the word of God. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your heart, sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord, friends. Well, here we are, friends. We are trucking with perseverance through our sermon series on fruits of the Spirit, fruit of the Spirit, which we know is a gift from God that you already own, that you already possess. It's not something that we need to go running and chasing and seeking and begging God about. He already gave it to us. It dwells within us by the power of the Holy Spirit. So we should say, amen, hallelujah, praise God. This was a tough one for me. Um, I really had trepidation about it most of the week. I did my due diligence, so I have my scriptural backup. And as I was doing my work, just like every one of the other gifts we have talked about, love, peace, joy, patience, kindness was right there. Almost in some fashion, certainly in every chapter of the New Testament. And if you went seeking hard enough and you took the time, even in the Old Testament, which was founded on rules and regulations primarily, the old law. There are prophets, voices, who are telling you, yes, follow the rule of law of God, but it's okay to have compassion and kindness as you do that. 
Well, gang, here we are. Um, let me give you a couple quotes first. No, I'll back up. I wanted to jump right into it, and God's telling me not to, so I'll read what I wrote first. What comes to mind when you think of kindness? I'm not going to ask for responses. Just roll that through for a minute. Seriously, what comes to mind when you think about a kind? That person is so kind. Or, or that person is the nicest person. We all say that, yes? Of course we do. We recognize it, don't we? It might be in the form of a surprise note from a friend that you didn't expect. Everybody had one of those, a card. And you open the mail, and you go, oh my, how cool, or how wonderful. That's kindness? Sure it is. How about someone, there's a step farther, we're putting it in action even more. How about somebody who knows what your favorite cookie, you know, the chocolate chip cookie. And by golly, it's happened a couple times in my life, you get them delivered to your house and they're still warm. Now, is that superior kindness or what? Yeah, that is, yeah. That is, I would put that in the outstanding kindness category. Okay. In the last few years, there has been a cultural phenomenon calling, calling it pay, pay it forward. Right? You do something good for someone who didn't ask for it, and the hope is that that person then, because the kindness was shed to them, will in turn do a kindness for someone else. Now there's an idea, and it works pretty well. And there has been uh, internet campaigns about that, and there's nothing wrong with that. It helps spread kindness. How about speaking up and defending someone who's being criticized in a group or criticized at a meeting or criticized at your place of work and instead of going, oh, I feel so sorry for that person, you kind of insert yourself gently and say, you know, I kind of feel like that too. Now I'm stepping it up, aren't I? So now it becomes a conscious decision, not necessarily to do something that you know you will feel warm and fuzzy about, and your receiver will feel warm and fuzzy about. All right? That's a, that's a good thing. You can do random acts of those kind of kindnesses all day long. And I'm not discouraging you from doing that. But the kind of kindness that Jesus is talking about through Paul today and through the Old Testament reading that uh, Patty did of Micah is goes, starts to get into this gray territory of kindness of Jesus says, defend the lowly. Defend the, the people in need. Defend, defend, not shower with cookies. Uh-oh. Stay with me, group. How about standing up for someone who is bullied? Now, I think our society is kind of training us to say that bullies, uh, bullying is being stepped up uh, primarily in the uh, elementary and, and high school and, and teenage population? Yes, absolutely. Um, I still can't believe half of the online bullying camp, it's, it's, it makes me ill. But guess what? What about nursing homes? You know it, and I know it, because we read the news, and the cases have gone to court, and we see it, and yes, indeed, people who are charged with caring, the caretaking of others, there are those certain few individuals, and I'd like to say few, I don't want to think past that, that indeed will bully 
an older person in need of care that is helpless. Yes? Yes. Most likely when you think about kindness experienced, it usually includes that warm feeling. No wonder it's the fruit of the Spirit of God. When we're kind to others, they experience that warmth. And whether the person realizes it or not, that's an exhibit of God's character, not necessarily yours. You are the servant of God. You are the hands and feet of God at that point. And what's giving you the grace to do that act of kindness to someone, warm and fuzzy as it is, God does two things. He blesses you for doing that action, not just thought, but action. And he blesses the other person, not just by receiving that physical, temporal thing, but by hopefully showing them that that is directly connected to an act of God in their lives. Now we're starting, I hope, to understand what true kindness is. A recent University of California Berkeley study stated last year that Americans are becoming more cynical, more negative, and less compassionate. I'm going to say, can I get an amen? And I hope you didn't say that just because I called for it. I hope that you are realizing that that is a fact here in our country. Why is that? Well, we have a lot of excuses. Some people lose their good intentions in the face of everyday pressure and realities. Oh, I snapped. Uh, but I've got so many pressures and so much burden on me. I just couldn't control it. So, boom. Yes, but that's an excuse. In the case of a California motorist whose car license had on it the inscription, Peace. She was driving down a two-lane road in the mountains and she came up behind a pickup truck who was creeping kind of along rather slowly. It was raining, and she was on his bumper. And so the man gently would tap his bumper. You ever do that? I do that. You tap your brake lights, don't you? Yeah, it's like, and that's just to say, hey, give me some space, right? Tapped her brake lights, the truck tapped his brake lights a couple times. She kept, she kept going all around this curve, finally got to a straightaway where she could pass. And the lady pulled alongside of the truck. She took out, the, uh, this is, mm -hmm. she took out a metal baseball bat and she started banging on the car. And before she put her pedal to the metal and drove by, <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, she took out a can of air freshener and threw it at it. Well, was back coming behind her, pulled the lady over. This trooper uh, said that she told her, told him she was in a hurry and getting frustrated by this man in front of her. When the trooper asked her about her license plate that said, peace, she said she got it because there was so much going on in today's society that was ang about anger and frustration. People just needed to chill out. <laughs> I would have loved to bend that officer. I would have loved to bend that officer. <laughs> it's like... Um, there it is. There is the example of being so frustrated, having such a short fuse, for whatever reasons in our lives, that we forget what we really believe. Hmm. So I understand, but it's still an excuse. To follow Jesus, we need to remember Paul's words in Ephesians 4. Give a listen. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Step further, 
forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. How many times have we heard that? How, you know that verse by heart. That's another book of the New Testament that tells it exactly how it needs to be. The act of not forgiving one person seems very personal to me, right? I'm sorry, I, for, I forgive you know, the, the multitudes and I can forgive this and I can forgive my mom and I can forgive you know, Uncle Harry for snoring and waking up the whole place on Sunday afternoon. I can forgive all of those things, but I've got this one person that just drives me nuts. Just let that sit there. Here's the implication of that. However, if each person has a person in particular that they cannot seem to forgive in their heart, they may say the words, but they cannot forgive it in their heart, or certainly cannot shower compassion upon, it changes the demeanor of everybody who's around them. You know it yourself, because we are intuitive human beings, are we not? Can't you sense when somebody's upset? Oh, everything. I hate this one. You all know it. How are you? I'm just great. Really? You don't seem like it. No, 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 really. Everything's fine. We do it all the time, right? And so that person that asked out of kindness, how's it going, walks away and goes, uh-uh. So, you know, something's not right there. And after a while, your one beef with one person and my one beef with one person and Darla's one beef with one person, you know, and Evelyn's one beef with four people. No, just kidding. <laughs> All of a sudden, we have a whole lot of people who are walking around this community, you know, and you can forget about it sometimes, but won't it come to the surface just like that? Particularly if you see someone else with the same behavior. It's like, <laughs> ah, there's another one. Yeah. Can you see how that happens? Dr. Lawrence Gould, who was the uh, president emeritus of Carleton College, said this, I do not believe the greatest threat to our future is bombs and guided missiles. I think our country will die when we no longer care. And he points out that there were 19 of 21 past civilizations that have died from within and not by conquest from without. Now this didn't happen in one swoop. It happened slowly, kind of in the dark, when no one was paying attention or aware or making the connections about what their problem as a country really was. Luke 6, Luke's advice in chapter 6 is this, and now we're starting to plod through this kindness, spirit-filled idea. But love your enemies, do good to them, lend to them without expecting to get anything back. One time I lent something to the neighbor, and do you know he never gave it back? Did you ask him? No. I expected that he would know and give it back. If they were kind and responsible at all, I shouldn't have to ask. Have you talked to him yet? I have no reason to talk to him. Is that why you built that hedge or put in that hedge right there? No, I like the greenery. You get it. K. 
carrying on in Luke 6, the words of the uh, gospel for you. Then your reward will be great, and you will belong to the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful. Be merciful to others, just as your God is merciful to you. How much clearer can that be, friends? How much clearer? It doesn't matter which side you're on, what your personal opinion is, none of that stuff matters because this is worldly, and it ain't going to be that way in eternal life. So how did we get all spun up and blown up the Internet and blowing up our friendships and blowing up our colleagues' relationships and you fill in the blank and blowing up families? I had a conference with somebody last week, and the concern was that she could take anything else in, on social media, on the television, in the community, but PK, it's my own brother. Don't tell me that lack of kindness and centering on Jesus Christ does not get in the way of every fiber of your being and every relationship which God has blessed you with. Right? Okay. Showing kindness in those situations usually isn't our first response. But yet, that's the type of kindness that Jesus was talking about. Loving an enemy just doesn't make any sense. God, why did, why did you let us do this? Uh-oh, bing, 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 stop the music. Yes, God let us make our own choice to do that. And the only way we can improve and change that for first ourselves. See, that's the problem. First, you got to look at yourself because that's the thing between you and God and he's your best bud. He is your only source. He will get you through everything, let you walk through fire, whatever, unless you choose to step away and do something other. And... Have we all done that? Chief of sinners, though I be, absolutely. So why can I stand here and preach to you? Because one thing I know for sure, I have the forgiveness of God, and I have the grace to start over. And so I can smile. Do I, do I like the status we are in here today? Absolutely not. I can hate it. I can hate the condition of our world. I cannot hate the bodies that God the Father created and populated this earth with, no matter what. I can try to love them, and I certainly can pray for them, and that doesn't mean you can come into church, hear the word of the Lord, walk out, and go back to, oh boy, I just don't understand that whole group of people. It just makes me so angry. If they would just understand. Understand what? They understand just as much from over here about what they believe as you do over here. And then what we do, which is not in the will of God, is say, we're just at an impasse. That's what the world can do. They have permission to do that. Hate to break it to you, kids. If you are a true believer in the power of God, the Son's redemption, and the infusion, hear me, and the infusion of the Holy Spirit into your body and soul, you can't do that. You see, you have to step out. You have to be the one in whatever little circle you are at. Otherwise, you are one of them who chooses not to exhibit Jesus' love. 
And then, even though I love you all dearly, you need to come and sit here not as this, you know, we, we're the good guys. You know, and I, I do believe we do that. It's like, well, I thought about you this morning. I didn't know who was going to be here, of course. And I always pray in my office before I come out. And I thought, God, this is a good thing that you have done and blessed us with. Because when the world, try this one out, when the world is in chaos, like it is now, these folks, I think, can experience the joy and the peace and the assurance of coming to a place with regularity, right? We hardly ever close, just like McDonald's, okay? We hardly ever close, and I hope that that gives you a heart of peace that when all else has fallen around in your family, in the town, and wherever, in the country, that when you come through the doors, you experience the peace of God which passes all your understanding. That's what it's supposed to do. Now, here's the bottom. The, the last part of that is, and when you come in to worship God, and you hear the word of God proclaimed, Sorry, Christy, I'm on a roll. I'm moving all over. Then, then you can't go out and go back to the same way you were when you came in. Depressed, nervous, despairing. And, you know, and I'm not saying, woo, is me. You know what I'm saying. It's that uncertainty in your heart. You just, you, you could be better. Well, hopefully, now after I've pounded this in your heads, I apologize for that. No, I don't. No, I don't. Word of God. Word of God, is it not? Can I get an amen on that? I am one of you. I am one of you. I might as well turn around and sit down next to Margie and preach, and you can just look. Because I'm in that boat with you. But my job as a proclaimer of the word is to remind you that in every book of the Bible that I hope you believe in, there is hope and direction, wait for it, for action. That's the trouble. The good guys got to act. And how does Jesus tell us to act? Kindness. You see? That's never going to incite any riot. Agreed? Yeah. Kindness, I pretty much can get to you, when it's done from the heart, will never make things worse. Now, what it does, though, is if you step out in a gesture of kindness to an enemy or to a, a group that is haters, etc., and you exhibit kindness to them, there is a possibility of what? Anybody? Somebody? Yes. What's the possibility on the other side of the fence? You're in this group who think you're crazy. Yeah, there is, a, there is a possibility they will reject that kindness, correct? And without any hands, I want you to reflect upon a time in your life when you have done what God asked you to do. I, I get, mm, and I step out there. And you say, guys, you know, it's really not quite as bad as you think, you know. How about, and you change the subject and you say, you know, I'll buy coffee or, you know, God bless you or something. And, you know, you get booed <laughs> and you get ostracized. We go. We don't want you. All you have to do is turn on the TV there, you know. Either way. That isn't their problem. You have done what God asked you. All right? The problem then is, what you do is get, well, I'm never going to do that again. huh? The fear, human fear is there. And all you need to do is go to God and have God replace your human fear with the fear of the Lord. And, whoosh, whoosh, and keep on trucking. And do it again. And pretty soon, just like all the prophets of the Old Testament, just like all the disciples of the New Testament. You, know, you think it was easy for those guys? Whew! 
you know, walk into a town that didn't want him there and start preaching this stuff? Yeah, where's the nearest rock? You get it. You see, and so my word of hope for you as we leave today here about this is this. What we are experiencing now today is unfortunately nothing new. It's been experienced from the beginning of time. And I suggest to you that it's on an ebb and a flow. And I do believe with all my heart that God allows for us and each generation, maybe five generations together, to be in the valley of uncertainty, hate, non-understanding of the concept of love and forgiveness and all of those fruits of the Spirit, and then there becomes that spirit of kindness. Do you remember the campaign, I'd like to give the world of Coke? You know, or whatever it is. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, in perfect harmony. You know, doesn't it sound trite? Don't think that's trite, kids. Okay? Because that came from one of the most powerful companies on the planet. And that was their way of trying to draw people together. And you know what? It worked. All right. Um, I went just a little long today because we're coming to the end of the series. And um, we have two more, right, Christy? Yes. Thank you. We have two more, uh, gentleness and faithfulness. And those will be easier for us. Kindness, is it not, you know, God-ordained that this is what came up on the, sun, the Sunday before the election? You know? Um, I, I would like to think that, you know, God will intervene and we will have, you know, polls that are uh, open and people shaking hands and whatever, but, you know, I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to say that. As a proclaimer of the word, I leave all things to God who strengthens me. And you know what? We could solve that without having to go to a poll if we started the movement here in the pews and here on Newman Street. You know what I'm saying? So you can do it. You are, you are the army of God. You are. I don't care whether you have a walker, a cane, tennis shoes, or a skateboard. You are the army of God. To sit and do nothing or say nothing is detrimental to how long we are going to have to wait to climb back up to the top of the slope and say, God, I'm getting a small glimpse of what you intended this beautiful earth to be for you. In God's holy and all-powerful name, amen.